Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Monday night. It's Monday Night Live and broadcasting tonight from all over the United States, Northwest, the South, the East. And we're excited, guys. Summer is almost behind us, right? Who's ready for summer to be over? Well, not really me, <laughs> but summer's almost over. And can you tell that when summer is over, all of a sudden the energy starts to shift? And people start to get uber re-engaged, and I think that's wonderful. So this is what I'm going to tell you right off the bat. Congratulations, because 73 people made a decision in these past seven days that they were coming to Austin. Seven, and you're going to hear tonight when we listen to Bob Proctor's short message, the power of making a decision means, my friends, that you have some leadership skills, Okay. And whereas other people are holding back, trying to manage the circumstances, going, well, let me wait until I save a couple more dollars or try to navigate if I had more time. That's not the way it works. When you make a decision, all of a sudden the details start to work out for themselves. And we're going to show that. I'm going to tell you, you guys rocked it. So we're going to start tonight about decisions. It's a quick six-minute message from Bob Proctor. What I want you to do is, as we did in the past, if you hear something that resonates with you from Bob Proctor or from our speakers tonight, because these girls know how to make decisions, please type it up in the chat bar, okay? All right, here's Mr. Proctor with decision-making. It'll carry you to great heights. Do you know, this book is the first book I ever read, and I've never stopped reading it. It's not that I'm such a slow reader. There's just so much in the book. And I like to ask myself, am I doing that when I read it? And if I'm not doing it, I just keep reading it. Well, I'm not doing everything in this book. But listen to what he said. He devoted an entire chapter. Napoleon Hill said, Accurate analysis of over 25,000 men and women who had experienced failure disclosed the fact that lack of decision was near the head of the 30 major causes of failure. And he said, this isn't any mere statement of theory, it's a fact. <coughs> now he said, analysis of several hundred people who had accumulated fortunes well beyond the million dollar mark, and he, this is back in 1930, well beyond the million dollar mark, disclosed the fact that every one of them had the habit of reaching decisions promptly and of changing those decisions slowly if and when they changed them at all. He said people who fail to accumulate money without exception have the habit of reaching decisions, if at all, very slowly and in changing those decisions quickly and often. I'm going to take you right near the end of the chapter and read a part to you. He said, those who reach decisions promptly and definitely know what they want and they generally get it. The leaders in every walk of life decide quickly and firmly. That's the major reason why they're leaders. The world is a habit of making room for the man or woman whose words and actions show they know where they're going. Now he said, indecision is a habit which usually begins in youth. The habit takes on permanency as the youth goes through grade school, high school, and eventually through college without any definiteness of purpose. The major weakness of all educational systems is that they neither teach nor encourage the habit of decision. Now, if you were to talk to anyone that knows me, they'll know that I make decisions on the spot about big things. I make the decision to do things before we're anywhere near ready to do them. I always figure, if you start before you're ready, you'll pull everything together. And it's a habit I've got. And do you want to know something? The people around me have got into the habit of doing the same thing. Follow the quiet voice within that's telling you which way to go. Quit asking other people, what do you think I should do? What do you think I should do? First of all, they probably don't think. If the average person did what they were thinking, they would be speechless. They just keep making noise. Listen to their conversation. It's going to become obvious they're not thinking or they'd never do what they're doing. 
Watch their behavior. You know they'd never do what they're doing if they were thinking. Decision. You've probably got a whole series of decisions you could make today. Maybe you should stay right where you are and write out all the things that you have to make decisions on and make them one after another and advise people this is the way it is. It's like President Reagan said one time. He said, when I make a decision, I gather the information I needed and I make a decision. He said, I don't take a vote. I make a decision. I like that. Great American general one time said, make a decision, right or wrong, make the decision. If it's the wrong one, you can go back and change it. He studied the lives of 25,000 people, successful people, every one of them. I think this information is valuable to you. Sit and ask yourself, who do I need to make decisions on right now? And I guarantee you, become decisive. Do it today, do it tomorrow, do it the next day, and you'll turn it into a habit, and you'll become known as a very decisive individual. And that will give you results that stick. This is Bob Proctor. Thank you. Oh, I love that man. I love that man. I love that man. Okay, so indecision is the enemy of success. And I love stop asking other people what they think because most people are not. All right. So that was so powerful. So tonight, my friends, we have with us two partners on our team who have made some decisions in their lives. Okay. And because they've made decisions, it's showing up in their personal life and it's showing up in their business life. So tonight we have from Clovis, New Mexico, the adorable Heather Bender. Heather is a wife, she's a mom, she's a sales coordinator, and she just celebrated her second anniversary with Juice Plus. And she was on the leaderboard last month for double digit preferred customers for the month of July. Now that, my friends, is impressive. So Heather, are you there, my darling? Unmute yourself like to know a little bit about you, introduce yourself, what does this message mean to you, and what kind of decisions have you made, and how did you end up on with double-digit customers? Well, hi everyone, I'm Heather Bender. I have a horrible sinus infection, so I sound like a preteen going through puberty. So I'm trying to talk as loud as I can. This is all I got, so bear with me. Um, I, I did live in Clovis, New Mexico. I have um, three kids. I have a nine-year-old stepson, I have a three-year-old, and we have a two-month-old. And we're just enjoying life with them, so this summer has been busy and fun, but it's been crazy and all the things, but it's been good. Um, so I think for, if you follow me on my personal page, you know that I'm all about omitting the highlight reel of life. And it would be, I would be doing everyone a disservice if I didn't say that my growth with Juice Plus really started with my growth personally. My marriage was going through a really, really difficult time. And I really stepped back and said, okay, in order to be better for my marriage, what do I, how do I need to change myself? What do I need to do to change, to show up better for my family, for my kids, for my job, for everything? And so I'm all about self-help. I'm all about growing and being better. And so I really just started plugging into podcast. And there are so many of you on here that I follow that I just idolize and I'm watching what you're doing. And so I took a step back and I said, okay, how can I make myself better? I really got to a place where I was like, had analysis paralysis. I've always been a person who's just jumped in and done the thing. And for some reason, when I became a mom, I just had a difficult time. Was I making the right decisions? Was I making people unhappy? Was I hurting people's feelings? All these things. And I got to a point I couldn't make a decision. And that was showing up in my business where I was afraid to have conversations with people. I was afraid to ask people about Juice Plus. I was afraid to, to do anything. And quite frankly, I was afraid to just take a step forward to get out of my own comfort zone. And so whenever I really got to a place where um, I, I listened to a podcast and she had talked about how you need to pick a lane and how you need to pursue one goal at a time. And that really resonated with me. Um, 
because instead of trying to pursue so many different things at one time, she said, pick a lane, pick the thing that you really want to pursue. And my lane was juice plus. And so I was like, okay, I'm picking juice plus. I've, I'm kind of good in these other areas, but this is really where I want to go. And so I decided, I knew I was kind of okay at social media. Like I'm not Abby good, but I kind of know what the heck I'm doing. And so I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I know that people resonate. I know people connect with me over social media. So I'm going to get really, really good at this. And then I'm going to branch out and do something different. And so I just made the choice to every single day, regardless of my mood, regardless of what life was throwing at me to, to plug on my stories on Instagram. And I was like, that's what I'm going to do. And that's exactly how I got I, y'all, I didn't go out and talk to everyone that listened to or that watched my story. I didn't reach out to 75 people a day. I literally just posted on my stories and I'm not naive. I know that there will become a, there will come a time when that will run out. Um, but for the moment that is what's worked. And so now I'm really comfortable with that. So now I'm trying to segue into getting really comfortable with events and, um, and kind of going that route. Cause that is not my comfort zone and I need team in Clovis. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to get people over to my house and I'm just going to be like, listen, you're going to do this with me and you're going to like it. And here we go. And, um, so that, that's really just the intentionality I think is, has helped and just getting to a point where you know that no one's going to live my life for me. I'm responsible for living my life and no one's going to make choices for me. And if I let other people make choices for me, my life's not going to end up the way I want it to. And I have an example to set for my two girls and I want them to be boss babes. I don't want them to go in the world and do the thing. So that's kind of it. Kind of, yeah. Girl, that was everybody. Everybody, let me see this. Oh my gosh, you're right, Steph Fletch. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed it, but over the summer, the bar has been elevated on these calls. Heather, that was so real. If that's the kind of story that you're sharing on social media, no wonder people are plugging into you. Okay, because that was every time <laughs> okay well then girl don't stop because you know your story is ongoing right every day every experience congratulations thank, thank you. you thank Thanks you for, for having me <laughs> i just think the world of you i'm so proud of you i'm so proud of you for stepping up and saying yes to this call because every time guys you say yes and we showcase you that's a growing experience too thank yeah. you my darling thank okay you. all right next all right now this partner she's on the leaderboard every single month i mean every single month she shows up all the time every single monday night call maybe there's 10 of us there's abby nolan she is the ultimate student okay and it shows so last month, I don't know if you had 15 or 16 customers the month before, 12 or 13, always double digit customers. This girl's making some decisions. And so I want to know what's going on in Abby Nolan's life. Abby, my darling, take it away. Thank you, Terry. Um, I find it ironic, y'all, that tonight I'm speaking a little blurb on decisions because decisions and making them in my personal life have been a struggle for me. I second guess myself. Um, I overthink a lot of things. Um, and a little funny story about myself showing my type A overthinking personality. I want to say I was eight, nine or 10, somewhere in that range. Um, Christmas shopping at a dollar store um, with my friend and her mom. And we were getting to the checkout and we get to the checkout and I'm, I'm starting to feel a little anxious and I start crying. And, um, my mom, my friend's mom is like, Abby, what's, what's the problem? And I'm like, I just don't know. I don't, I don't know if this is a good choice. I don't know if I can purchase these dollar items. And I'm, I'm crying about dollar items. And I get on the phone with my mom and she's trying to talk me through it and all of those things. And anyway, I eventually walk away. I don't think I bought anything that day, but Regardless, I feel like in our lives, we can often feel like we get to this point where we feel so paralyzed by fear. Um, and what if I make the wrong choice that we don't make any choices? We stay stuck in a place of, okay, well, what if this happens? Or what if this happens? And instead, Ali Schneider said this one time, um, I think it was at P4Q. She was like, I just said yes. And I figured out the rest later. And Bob Proctor said that. 
just say yes and figure out the rest later. Because if you sit here and you make excuses or you become fearful, fear will stop you hard in your tracks and you will never go anywhere. Fear will be your worst enemy in every area of your life, not just in business. And so as I was thinking about what I wanted to kind of leave you with tonight, um, I wanted to challenge you to make a decision in three areas. Um, and three areas that I have really grown in over the past year um, since I went to conference for the very first time last October. So make a decision to do four events a month and that might terrify you. But an event can be a coffee date, y'all. Make it work for your season of life. I'm in Abilene and at first the thought of doing events in Abilene in a place where I knew nobody I have now fostered sweet friendships. I did an event last night with Nicole and Sharina. I'm doing Facebook events weekly. Make it work. You can do it. Don't let excuses and life stop you from doing something that you want to do. So coffee date, Zoom, Facebook, live, whatever that looks like, don't make excuses. Just do it. Put it on the calendar. Take something that's duplicatable. Don't feel like you need to get crazy creative because if you get bogged down in the mundane details, you're not going to do it. Just say yes and move forward. The second thing I want to challenge you to make a decision in is utilizing your social media. Y'all, if you're not using your social media, you are missing out on a world of business. Heather was just talking about that. She just started posting on social media and it doesn't have to be all juice plus. So I want to challenge you that if you're not utilizing social media in any way, shape or form for the next 30 days, just post something. Post about your day, post about what you did, post about your kids, post about your husband, post about anything. Just be you. People don't buy Juice Plus because it's Juice Plus. They buy it because they trust you. And if you don't give them a reason to trust you or know you, they're never going to buy from you. So start posting on social media. If you do already post on social media, I want to challenge you to start weaving bits and pieces of your story into your everyday posts. So pick the three things that stick out to you the most, that are the most powerful to you in your Juice Plus journey, um, and your, whether that's your business story or your product story, and start weaving those words in your social media posts. I was on a call with Jamie and Courtney, and they were encouraging me kind of in my social media walk, and, and that's something they challenged me to do. It doesn't have to be flashy Juice Plus. I'm not saying be secretive about it, but share your story and weave in bits and pieces because people are watching whether you think they are or not, people are watching you. And the third thing I wanna challenge you to make a decision on is to tell your story unapologetically. And this can feel really, really scary because telling your story is real, raw, and vulnerable. And it's not pretty with a little bow wrapped around it. And the very first time Courtney told me to get on Facebook and tell my story, I thought I was gonna pee my pants. I was like, you can't make me do that. Please don't make me do that. And she was like, you got to do it, Abby. And I was like, dang it, you know, and you just, you just do it. You muster the courage and you do it. So imagine if people saw your story and they saw the confidence that you brought, mm -hmm. what would that look like in your business? If you, had, when you shared your story, you exuded this confidence and this vulnerability and this beauty about you that people were like, oh my gosh, why, what have I, what am I missing? Why have I not said yes to this? Why have I not given this a try? And regardless if somebody doesn't buy, you know, in month one when you're planting those seeds, six months down the road, a year down the road, whatever that looks like when somebody comes to you and says, I remember this time that you told your story, how will that make you feel? It'll make you feel like you made an impact because you told your story unapolog unapologetically and you weren't afraid of what people were going to think. The way you perceive me, I can't control how you perceive me and you can't control how other people perceive you. So you have to stop living in the fear of how people will perceive what you do. Because if your heart's in the right place, at the end of the day, you're responsible for the decisions that you make and that's all that matters. So you aren't always going to feel like doing these three things, y'all. You're not gonna wanna get up every single day and post on social media or make a decision to do an event or tell your story unapologetically to someone at coffee and you're shaking and you're nervous and your heart's beating out of your chest and you just, uh, you get all nervous. But if you're consistent, I promise you, your business will grow. Make the decision, make those decisions in your life, weekly and daily, 
in and out, and I promise your business will grow. Thanks, y'all. Wow. Everybody. <laughs> oh! oh, my gosh. Um, I think Team Up, and of course, we're all under the Team Up umbrella, is in good shape in terms of up-and-coming leadership. And I hope, Abby, I know you have because we visit all the time. I hope, Heather, I hope those of you that have been speaking, Amy, I hope you've made the decision that you are leadership when it comes to our Juice Plus business because you are richly deserving. You're so talented. So what I've learned is this. Well, of course, I learned this 20 years ago, but it keeps showing up. Make the decision. The details start to work themselves out. Indecision is the enemy of success. Gary Blair said, unless you make clear, unbending decisions, you will accept table scraps by default. Goethe, amazing philosopher, said, once you make the decision, providence moves too. Okay, 73 of us said yes to Austin, Texas, okay? So um, I wanna give away a little money, but before I give away a little money, Tonight, I'm going to draw one name, and Kathy's got this very fun thing that we're going to do to pick the name, but we'll talk about that in a second. I've got another incentive that's kind of brewing in my head, so bear with me here. You know how I always celebrate those distributors that have five or more or double digit on the Team Up Facebook page and all the Facebook pages, and that's where Heather last month and Abby excels on a regular basis. Well, I thought, what if we took that same concept and added a little spice to it? So I'm going to do another raffle at the end of the month. And this is how it's going to play out. Anyone that gets the five customer orders for the month of August, your name will go into the raffle one time. If you hit double digit in the month of August, your name will go into the raffle two times. If you do the, how I grew my business, what we call 5-1, where you get at least five customer orders and you bring one person to our team, they say yes to the business, and they put in their one order, so it's really five, one, one, okay? Your name will go into the raffle three times. One, two, and three. And I'm gonna raffle off the last day of business. How about another $200 for you to spend at your conference experience? Whatever that is, flight, hotel, food, a bar on 6th Street. I don't care. Okay, I'll meet you there. There's George Tish Clayton goes, yeah, 6th Street. Okay, and here guys, so many of you are so close. 42 of us already are close to five. Right here in this room tonight, already with four. Bonnie Davis, Don Hunter, Ann Kennedy, Michelle Clay, Brittany Spoon, Jessica Williams, Lucy Goff, Abby Nolan already sitting with four, okay? Um, how about those already with five? Judy Strickler, Aaron Kinzer, Allison Cornish, Amy Hopkins, Luann Taylor, they're already in for one chance. And then listen to this, and it's only the middle of the month. Landon Barron, I don't know who he is, but I wanna meet him. Six customers already, okay? Uh, Someone else who's always on the leaderboard, Sharina McMahon, is already sitting there with seven. And I was with this girl last week up in Salem, Oregon. Michelle Halverson has already got nine orders in the system for the month. So we're going to have some fun. Oh, my word. Okay. So get your five, get your 10, do your five, one, one, bring somebody on board. Guys, we have too much fun not to share this with the world. And guys, we have a lot of work to do out there. Your friends, your family, people in your community, they need Juice Plus bad. They need it bad. 
All right, so next, before we do our raffle, next Monday night, Duana Scattleberry, she is the regional manager for the Northeast. She's a New York girl. She's got sash, she's got spunk. She'll blow your hair back. It's gonna be our featured speaker. Um, and then I'll give, I'll give you an update as to where you are. Okay, Kathy Schlund, the other Terry Luongo over there in the corner. Tell the people what we're gonna do because this is so different. How are we gonna draw this name? Okay, I was hoping it was gonna be a little bit more fun than it is. But what happened is that I figured out how on an Excel spreadsheet, we got everybody's name. And I've got a little formula in there and when I'm gonna show in just a minute, it's a random drawing formula. And we're gonna to click to the Excel spreadsheet and you're gonna see that there's a little formula in there. And when I hit enter, the name's gonna show up. So everybody's gonna to have to squint <laughs> and look at the Excel spreadsheet. Put your glasses on. You guys ready? Okay, all right, pull her up, pull her up. Okay. Here we are. Go. Oh, there was a typo in my formula. <laughs> hold on, hold on, I can do it real quick. <laughs> Cassie Beard. Cassie. Cassie Beard. Okay. Cassie. Cassie, are you on the call? Cassie's not with us. She's still going to win her $200. She has to be in Austin to get her $200. And I will give the money at our big team up gathering Friday at lunchtime. Okay. And we'll details more to come about that. But uh, guys, thanks for playing this month. It was so proud. I just, I'm so proud of you. All right. Thanks so much. I know some of you are just on other calls. Peace out. Have a sweet night.